consumers are paying more for everything these days, from eggs to prescription medications. And there are several federally funded programs that can help defray some of those expenses, yet they go unused year after year. For example, while 26 million older adults were eligible for supplemental nutrition assistance in 2018, AARP found that 63% did not take advantage of this benefit. And the numbers haven't improved much since. Good evening and welcome to this month's edition of Rural America Live with AARP. I'm Christina Loren. Older adults, without ever even realizing it, are leaving billions of dollars in government aid on the table every single year. And that money could go to help pay for utilities, for your rent, prescription drugs, groceries, and much more even recreation. Tonight, our friends from AARP will share some incredibly valuable information about programs and money that's available to help those in need. And boy, do we wanna hear from you tonight. Join our conversation by giving us a call at 877-283-7570. And our question of the month is, how is inflation eating into your ability to pay necessary bills? We want to hear from you. We want to hear your personal story tonight. And get this, if you call in, you might be a winner tonight. We are giving away a cooler to five lucky on-air callers. Pick up the phone, join our conversation. This is a high quality cooler as well. 877-283-7570. AARP will cover the shipping for you. And you don't need to be a member of AARP or even over the age of 50 to win. But as a friendly reminder, you can only win one time each calendar year. Join the conversation and give us a call tonight. 877-283-7570. You might just be a winner tonight. The run for the cooler starts now. Now, as we have told you before, if you're a winner, AARP will call you back in the next few days to confirm your mailing address. They will leave you a voicemail, so make sure to return their call. All right, it's time. I want to welcome our guests tonight. Welcome Brad Anderson, director of AARP Iowa, and Greg Marshaldens back with us tonight, director of AARP Vermont. Now, it's great to see you both. When I saw that we were going to do a show on benefits, I immediately took a deeper dive just to know that there's money on the table that so many people need right now and that they could access. I mean, this is this is big news right now, and it's always AARP letting us know about every single cent that is available to people who need that money so desperately. So as we continue on, I wanna start this conversation with Brad. What is AARP seeing when it comes to these underutilized services in particular? We're seeing exactly what you just said. Too many Americans are leaving too much money on the table. So we're talking about money for prescription drugs. We're talking about money for food, We're talking about money for um, for uh, heating bills. Yeah. So in the winter, you know, it's getting colder. It's getting colder here in Nashville. So those heating bills are going to get expensive. So there are benefits out there for people, and there are millions of Americans who are struggling right now. And so what we want to do tonight, if Greg and I do our jobs right tonight, which I think we can, <laughs> right? I think we can. We'll see. Uh, and if the, our viewers have a pen and paper and they write this information down, potentially we could save people hundreds, if not thousands of dollars by walking them through some of these benefits that they may not know that they're eligible for. I love that. And, and we love, love saving money. You brought out the pen and paper. This is a call to action tonight, Rural America. Grab your pen, grab your paper, and the first thing you want to do is write down that number right there at the bottom of your screen, 877-283-7570, and give us a call because when you voice what's important to you, to AARP, they do something about it. And we want to hear from you tonight. Again, that number is 877-283-7570. Every penny can help. There was also an announcement about a COLA, or cost of living increase, for military retirees or disabled veterans. What will that increase be? Well, let's first talk about the Social Security increase, because this actually is some significant news. Uh, we are seeing a, almost a 9% increase in the cost of living, for cost of living for Social Security beneficiaries as we move toward 2023. This, I think, Brad, is the biggest increase in three or four decades. And you're right. So this is not a small thing. 9% is not it's small. It's not a small thing. <laughs> Most uh, working folks don't get 9% increases, you know, as an, 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 any kind of an annual increase for their right. jobs. Now, with that said, we are seeing uncharacteristically high inflation right now. So is it... A panacea? No, it's not. But this is a significant um, issue for 
uh, for folks receiving Social Security benefits and will make a huge difference in their day-to-day -day lives. Also, for Medicare recipients, they're going to see a decrease in their Part D premiums or deductibles coming up for 2023. So this is important stuff. Now, we're seeing high costs, um, but without the almost 9% cost of living increase for Social Security this year, um, folks living on fixed incomes or primarily on fixed incomes, this would be a very miserable start mm. to 2023. Mm. Absolutely. And let's talk about veterans now. What, what are we t looking at there? So for veterans, that same COLA increase that Social Security benefits beneficiaries are going to get, veterans are going to get, which is great news. And so millions of uh, vets, millions of retired military are going to get around $130 a month in benefits. Um, and that's benefits for disability compensation, for um, dependent benefits, for... Um, clothing allowances. So yeah. there, there are a lot of benefits coming. And of course, anytime you have benefits coming for our military, especially our military, uh, you got to watch out for scammers. We've talked a lot about scammers on this show. And um, so the scammers are out for these benefits. So the things that you can do to protect their ben benefits are number one, make sure that your information is updated through the VA. You got to make sure that information is updated and accurate. Secondly, and we say this all the time on this show, the VA will never call you, right? The VA will never call you. So how they communicate is they like to write, they like to you know, send you letters with letterhead, and that is how the VA communicates. So protect those benefits, you have earned them, um, and, and this is good news for veterans and for Social Security beneficiaries. Yeah, you know, and times are tough, and it really depends on, on where you are in your life, what stage you're in. I, I do wonder though, it's also regional. So what are you hearing from your members in Vermont about how we've seen the inflation rise at such a rapid rate? Well, look, it's been a tough time for, for, for seniors, certainly in my state. I'm, I live in the second oldest state in the nation. So we have a really large cross-section of our older adult population that live on Social Security and perhaps not much more. Some live on Social Security just by itself. So again, this 9% nine, nine increase is going to make a very big difference in their in their ability to to meet their monthly needs, but it's a difficult time out there. Um, and so um, we're telling people to, you know, try to embrace this 9% increase, um, and we're gonna get through this. You know, this is not a, this is not a, a permanent part of the economy, um, but I think when you look at particularly an area like prescription drugs, for, for years we're seeing skyrocketing costs, and now we're gonna see some action that's been taken in Congress that's gonna lower those costs for people. We're seeing an increase in Social Security checks, a come down in your Medicare deductibles. So some of this stuff is gonna happen in real time and people are gonna feel it right away. I love how you subtly mention it though without putting the power behind it that AARP is a big reason why this is happening. I mean, well, this is huge. The $2,000 cap for prescription drugs is revolutionary in this country. And I mean, insulin, we were talking about that a little bit earlier on. Mm -hmm. When are we gonna start to see those prices come down? So the insulin cap uh, comes in 2023, which is great. And again, you are so right. We have fought for this for decades. And so this is huge news when that Inflation Reduction Act got passed. So the Insulin cap happens uh, in 2023. The cap on overall costs that you're gonna pay for prescription drugs happens in 2024. So we've got some time, but the good news is it's coming. And you're right, I mean, to, I have to always give a shout out when we talk about our advocacy work to our volunteers That's right. who yes. help us in the states and they contact their members of Congress, they contact their senators. Uh, we could not do this without the tens of thousands of volunteers we have across the country. Well, whoever does the hiring, I mean, top notch. Every single person that I get a chance to work with from AARP is sharp. They know their craft. They know exactly what they're doing. They know their region. They know their people. And then you have a heart to help people. And so I, I just think it's a beautiful thing that you're doing, helping a lot each and every day. All right. Now we want to hear from you. Where are you hurting right now? Let us know. AARP is listening. We're going to take a quick break, but before we do, we have some great information about financial assistance that could be available to you if you are eligible for Medicare, and that's a lot of you. And we want you to join our conversation. We have coolers to give away as well tonight. 877-283-7570 is the number to call, and we will be right back with your calls. You might be a winner. Good luck to you. I can't afford Medicare. Is there any financial help available? Yes. Medicare beneficiaries who are also on Medicaid get some or all of their out-of-pocket costs covered. 
Medicaid is a joint federal and state program that helps some people with limited incomes get their medical care. More than 12.3 million people are what the federal government calls dual eligible. How do I qualify to become dual eligible? Each state has its own Medicaid program. It needs to follow federal guidelines, but each state gets to set eligibility standards and what it covers. You'll need to contact the program in your state to see if you meet its qualifications, including its income threshold. What if I don't qualify for Medicaid but still need financial help? Medicare has four savings programs. Qualified Medicare Beneficiary, Specified Low Income Medicare Beneficiary, Qualifying individual or qualified disabled and working individuals. These programs can help pay for Part A and Part B premiums and other out of pocket costs like deductibles, co pays, and other charges. Which program you qualify for will depend on your income. Check with your state's Medicaid office to see if you qualify for any of these programs. What about prescription drugs? The Extra Help program assists people with limited resources in paying for Part D prescription drug plan premiums, deductibles, and co-pays. How do I get extra help? If you qualify for the Qualified Medicare Beneficiary or the Specified Low Income Medicare Beneficiary program, you automatically can enroll in Extra Help. You can apply through the Social Security Administration. To learn more, go to aarp.org slash Medicare. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. Medicare, Parts A and B, Veterans Benefits, Prescription Drug Coverage, and Supplemental Coverage. Navigating benefits, they can be complex and confusing. But we have a resource to help you figure it out. And we have some great information about programs that can help you pay for things like groceries and utilities. Well, before we get there, I wanna make sure you're aware of what's on the table tonight. We are giving away five coolers to five lucky winners. So pick up the phone. Our phone lines are open. All you gotta do is join our conversation and let us know how inflation is impacting you. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. You might be a winner tonight. And I do wanna point out, we are very thorough on this show. James from Texas, Janice from Georgia, Tony from Pennsylvania, and I think that's it actually on this list. You have all won coolers, but AARP has been trying to reach out to you and you're not answering or returning that call. So again, James from Texas, Janice from Georgia, Tony from Pennsylvania, we wanna make sure that you get this cooler. And hey, you can join that list as well tonight. I'm giving that number one more time, 877-283-7570. Coming back to the conversation now with Greg Marshallden from AARP Vermont, Brad Anderson from AARP Iowa. We have a lot to cover tonight. But Brad, before we head to the phones, you have some benefits that are underused by millions of older Americans. What are they? Millions. Yeah. It's, and so, as we talked about earlier, there are too many people leaving too much money on the table. So let's walk through some of these benefits and get specific so people can know whether or not they might want to apply for some of these benefits. So first off, we've got SNAP. And uh, you mentioned this at the top of the show, and this program helps buy groceries uh, at the supermarket and the farmer's market. Nearly 26 million adults, 50 and older, were eligible for this program in a study that we did in 2018, and we found that 63% did not take advantage wow. of this benefit. 63%? More than half of the people eligible did not take advantage of this benefit. So we have work to do to let people know to apply for SNAP benefits. Secondly, uh, we've got healthcare help. And so this is a great program. The Medicare Savings Program helps pay eligible older adults Medicare Part A and Part B deductibles, co-insurance, and co-payments. So older adults can save about $2,000 per year through this program, yet more than 3 million eligible adults, again, 3 million, uh, 65 and older are not enrolled. And so they're leaving billions of dollars of funding that they are eligible for on the table and unused. So we need to, we got work to do for the Medicare $2, savings program. $2,000, yeah. $2,000, I mean, That's think real of what money. you could do with $2,000. Well, are you, are you sitting down? Cause get ready for this next one. <laughs> I'm bracing myself. Okay, okay. So there's the next one is um, uh, the low income subsidy for Medicare and prescription drug coverage. This is known as extra help. And so this can cover monthly premiums, deductibles and co-payments 
for Medicare prescription coverage. According to the Social Security Administration, extra help is worth around $5,100 per year wow. for eligible participants. And we found, we found $7.6 billion a year goes unused. Oh my goodness. So um, these Sorry. are programs that are on, this money is on the table waiting to get tapped for people who are eligible. 5, and so 000? we need to get the word out, which we're doing tonight. There's one other program I want to talk about if, if we have time. We've got time. Um, because we'll make time. The, we'll, let's make time for this program because <laughs> this is a really important one. Um, there's this benefit called the Affordable Connectivity Program. It's also called the ACP. And so this is a broadband internet benefit. And um, if you contact the FCC, dot gov slash ACP, so, or just Google Affordable Connectivity Program, right? Um, $30 a month for internet, if you're eligible. It will what? cover High internet. speed? You're talking oh, high, yeah. speed high speed internet. High speed broadband. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, again, this is a very simple process. These, it, finding out if you're eligible for each of these programs is very easy to do, um, but we need to get the word out, and people need to uh, check into this to, to see if they're eligible. Okay. Wow. Don't like to leave money on the table. No, absolutely. I mean, that's five thousand dollars that you're giving to wherever med medical costs, whatever the case may be. If you were to get that money reimbursed to you, five thousand dollars is a trip to Hawaii. You know, five thousand dollars <laughs> is a brand new couch, a brand new living room set. So many things can be done to make your quality of life better. So, I like the Hawaii trip. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could really stretch that and, and make it last in Hawaii if you knew what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> All right, we're going to go. To the, not that I like to save money. <laughs> Teresa from Kentucky joins us tonight. She is our first caller. And Teresa, congratulations. You are a winner. Go right ahead. Yes. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Oh, we're happy you're with us. Yes, yes. My husband and I and our family, we live in Kentucky. We're beef farmers, soybean crops, and we raise hay, uh, raise our garden. We eat off of our, eat off the land, and uh, I'm retiring this year after serving the Kentucky County Clerks Association for 30 years. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> County Clerks, woo, that's not easy. you got to have some patience. We thank you for calling. Do you have a question or a tip that you wanted to share with us tonight, Teresa? I'm sorry. Did I'm you listen to me on TV and listen to you. <laughs> That's a good, a good thing that you pointed out there because you want to try to get away from your TV if you are going to be calling us tonight. I'm just glad that you joined our conversation, Teresa. Thank you so much for calling in. And you, my friend, are a winner. So congratulations to you. We're going to go back to Kentucky. Thanks for oh, joining us. Kentucky. Jeff from Kentucky this oh, time. Go right ahead, Jeff. <laughs> Yes, I was looking at the, some of the benefits. I hadn't been aware of, of them before, and uh, nor how to get in touch with anyone to get enrolled in that stuff. And also, you know, another big uh, deal in this part of the country is uh, dental. Uh -huh. you know, dental uh, assistance. Well, this is a <clears throat> this is a long-standing issue, uh, particularly for people over sixty-five uh, on Medicare. Somehow, um, you know, we want to take care of uh, the rest of the, the body, but we don't want to take care of your teeth. We don't want to take care of your eyes. Um, so um, health care costs in general are very expensive for people that live on fixed incomes. And so if you have to pay these out-of-pocket fees for costs to see a dentist or see an eye doctor, um, hearing aids, those sorts of things, that can really increase your out-of-pocket costs. And we've seen health care costs particularly are an area um, that go up um, greater than the rate of inflation year in and year out, and that's in non-inflationary times, right? When cost uh, inflation is low, we're still seeing the cost for these types um, of, of, you know, these types of doctor's visits, these types of medical, um, you know, the equipment that people need, whether it's yeah. hearing aids, um, are very, very expensive. So we've got to do better here to bring costs down for people. Um, and this is an issue that we hear from our members all across the country, particularly those uh, on Medicare, where it's not a part um, of a, a health benefits package, that it, that it's more likely to be a part in some kind of an employer-provided coverage that you might receive. Yeah, especially if it's a gum disease issue, and, and we all know how serious yep. that can be just to see a periodontist, yep. for example, can be expensive. Yep. But if you leave that untreated, you have a very yep. serious problem on your yep. hands. So you bring up a really good point. Our next caller is Angie out of Alabama. And Angie, congratulations to you. You are a winner tonight. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, 
And um, God bless you all. Um, I believe the gentleman just before me asked the question. I was a, a part of it, but then you answered the um most of it. My, our main thing is we're having a hard time finding the insurance for dental and eye care. Uh, we have um, United Healthcare through AARP. Do they provide or or do, could they direct us to a reliable source? And again, thank you. Well, I think first of all, we, and we're going to talk about benefitscheckup.org. That's and right, so, a little bit. Yeah, and, but. I mean, may as well plug it now. Sure, go. Because there are people yeah. asking about yeah, benefits that they it. may or may not yeah. be eligible for. So <laughs> benefitscheckup.org uh, is a great place that will is, is very simple to use. So, for example, if you're in Kentucky, you plug in your zip code and you check the benefits that you're looking for. So there have been a couple people here checking for health and dental. Um, check to see if there's a program available for you, and it will give you a local number to call um, and walk you through that process. And, and nine times out of ten, I saw the Des Moines uh, zip code up there. Nine <laughs> times out of 10, you'll talk to a live human being. So uh, this is a great way to find benefits that you are eligible for, um, and it is very easy to use. One more time, what's that website? Benefitscheckup.org. Okay, that's um, And there it is on the screen. So I, I, I'll say that to start off with. Secondly, um, we need callers like this. and and. The reason we need them is because we take these stories back to our members of Congress. And so these two calls, frankly, are great because now we can go when we have these conversations and say, our first two calls were about dental insurance uh, and covering dental through Medicare. And I want to give you a success story. So we worked for a long time to get over-the-counter hearing aids uh, passed through the FDA. And so hearing aids, as people know, they cost about $5,000 per more. pair. Or more. Wow. Yeah, it can be up to ten. Um, and so we worked for about five years with Chuck Grassley from Iowa and Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts. Bipartisan. We got it. <laughs> very different sides. Very different. Very different. <laughs> very different. And, and, but but it, we got it done. Wow. And we got it done because people like the callers just now told us about the struggles that Only they are AARP having. Only AARP could do that. Okay, oh, you got Grassley exactly. on one side, Warren on the other. And AARP built the bridge. We Amazing. built the bridge. And as of last week... Uh, over-the-counter hearing aids are available yes. at your uh, at, at, at your uh, stores, oh, so they're oh they're gosh. out there. That's outstanding. And they cost news. about I think four hundred to eight hundred dollars yeah, a pair. Right. So you're, you're talking about saving thousands of dollars. Yeah. And you talk about quality of life. I mean, it's so hard when when you want to just live a normal life and go into a grocery store and and just partake in conversations as normal, but you can't because you can't hear, and that makes you insecure. So well, that's exactly right. It's well, so nice to see this. There are. You know, hundreds of thousands, more perhaps, of older adults that have foregone getting hearing aids simply because they could not afford them, as Brad said, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. Now you can go to your local pharmacy, uh, get yourself tested, and get a pair of very good hearing aids for four or five hundred bucks. That's not, you know, it's not free, but it's not four or five thousand no, dollars anymore. No, it's a huge markdown. That's, right. That's yep. fantastic. And I bet you that if you really needed the funding for it, if you were hurting financially, that there would be an outlet for you to find where you can get that financial assistance. I bet you that there's something out there. Well, and, and tonight we're talking about benefits, but it is so important that we hear from people yes. to talk about the benefits that maybe we're not talking about. Right. I'm taking up all your time, right. guys. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, no, no. Charles from North Dakota wants in on this conversation. Charles, we want to hear from you. Go right ahead. Yes. Uh, my comment was just about the, the groceries. Uh, price of groceries have gone up so much. That's what's hitting our pocketbook. Yeah. Well, we're seeing, you know, that's in North Dakota, South Dakota, Vermont, Iowa, all across the country, we've seen increases in the things that, that people need the most. And look, we're coming off a very rugged two years um, with this pandemic. We've had issues associated with the supply chain. We've had a real shift in how things are, you know, sort of happening all around us, how people are managing work and retirement. Um, I think, you know, there's certainly brighter days ahead. Um, but again, for those on Social Security, this increase of almost 9% is going to help yeah. them cover some of those costs. Um, but it's again, it's, a, it's difficult. And when we get a call like this, it says this is the kind of thing that's, that's hurting us. You know, we understand, which is again why we wanted to do a, a program on benefits and help people understand that there are probably a lot of things out there 
um, that you may be eligible for. And if we could just help you sort through a few of those things this evening and how to determine uh, uh, how you get them, that could make a really big difference too. I mean, access to healthy food is critical. It's huge. For everybody. It's huge. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and we're going to talk about fuel and heating and cooling and all that in a little bit as well. But that's what hits people in their pockets uh, each and every month. Mm hmm Okay, Terry from Louisiana joins the conversation now. Terry is a winner tonight. Thanks for joining us, Terry. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I'm grateful that you do these informative programs. Uh, what I wanted to ask was uh, I want an idea, of a ballpark idea of what the thresholds are, the income thresholds, for getting a lot of these benefits. I'm, I understand uh, that they vary by state, but there, there must be some kind of ballpark figure you can discuss. And yeah. I'll, uh, I'll let you answer. Terry's Thank exactly you. right. There, there, are, there are income thresholds that you need. So for example, the Affordability Connect program, um, that's 200% and below poverty level. So 200% above and then everything below poverty level, then you're eligible for um, that program or if you live on tribal lands. So um, there are various ways to uh, determine your eligibility for these programs. And it is kind of up to you. Now, for example, uh, we're going to talk about heating and cooling in a bit. But um, for that program, you know, you on average, people would save about $500. Right. Uh, and so it, so it is really, it's worth the time to check if you are eligible and if you do meet the income thresholds. But Terry is right. They vary, uh, and, and that's why you need to look it up. And they vary state by state and, as well. And she raised, Terry, it was an excellent question, and she raised another point too, because there are states all across the country that have additional discount programs and benefit programs that are specific to their own states, right? So I think one of the things that uh, government's done well is they're trying to figure out how to offer these benefits and make sure they get to the people that need them the most. What government hasn't done so well is help people know where, where they are and how to find them right. and how to determine uh, whether they're eligible for them, which is one of the reasons why we ARP thinks we can sort of fill that gap there. What would you say, 63%, 63% of not using this, this money that are eligible, 63%. For those SNAP benefits. Yeah, that, that yeah. just blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're talking about healthy food when you're talking about oh, yeah. SNAP. Yes, and you are. you're supporting our farmers in the process you're as well. You're supporting the farmers. And, uh, and you're a taxpayer. So, I mean, this is your money. The, so you, you have to understand uh, it is sitting there waiting for you. You earned um, it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. I like this conversation. And um, John from Texas is joining us. I want to make sure, John, before we go to you, that I give the number out. We're getting a lot of great calls tonight. I want to make sure we keep that going. The number to join us tonight. Let's get that on the screen if we can. <laughs> there we go. 877 283 75 Seven zero. We want to hear from you tonight. We still want to keep this conversation going. Mostly, we want to hear you as a sounding board. How is this hitting you? Let us know. You're informing AARP, and they're going to go boots on the ground into Washington now, armed with the knowledge that you provide. So give us a call, 877-283-7570. I cannot stress enough how important it is for us to hear from you, and you might be the winner of a really nice cooler with free shipping. <laughs> All right, John from Texas, sorry about that. Thanks for joining us. Go right ahead, sir. Okay, I've been a farmer and a rancher and a dairy farmer for all my life. And uh, basically, I paid in, you know, very little in, uh, Social Security. And I had a brain tumor two years ago, and I've been disabled. And they're telling me because I have not had insurance for disability that I'm not due any disability, uh, Social Security. Is that true? That sounds like a question for the Social Security it does, Administration. Yeah, I mean, um, I, 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 it, this seems odd to me. Um, but as Brad just said, I think the best thing that you could do would be to contact um, the local Social Security Administration office in your community or one near your community um, at ssa.org. You can find those phone numbers. Um, if you've got a local um, uh, senior center um, or a local um, area agency on aging, which are in communities all across the country, they should be able to address this uh, for you right away. And if you are due these benefits, 
um, you know, through the legal aid program and through senior law programs, you can get some representation and some help um, for you to figure out how to get um, benefits that you actually have earned that you deserve. Um, but again, this is definitely a question for the Social Security Administration, and I would highly recommend giving them a call um, because they'll be able to answer this question, I think, for you probably pretty quickly. And if anybody's curious about their Social Security income, you can go to ssa.gov. That's right. And, and you can safely log yep. in there and take a look at what's coming to you, how much you've earned so far, if, yep. you, if you've met. Yeah, so All it's that's great. there. ssa.gov. Find out. Information is power. Okay, we want to find out about another Medicare coverage situation. What about those people who are just starting to prepare to fill out that form, they're ready to start getting their first benefits from Medicare. How does this impact them? So here's, here's what I would do, number one, is go to medicare.gov and learn some of the basics, right? And um, there's a, you're, you're going to feel perhaps a little overwhelmed, but um, there's a, it's a great website and a great tool. The second resource that I would recommend to just about anyone is contact your local SHIP office, SH. IIP, the State Health Insurance Information Program. Every state has one, um, and these are highly trained people, and the great thing about them is they're totally unbiased in terms of what programs they recommend. All they want to do is hear from you and what you need. And so they will determine, do you need this drug benefit? Is this uh, Medicare Advantage plan work for you? Um, all those questions, SHIP is trained to answer. And I also say, and Greg, I don't know if you would agree with this, Make those calls every year because you can. Maybe you have. Um, maybe you don't have a heart problem one year, right. but you have some heart trouble, and all of a sudden you're on Eliquis, and you realize, man, that is really expensive. Um, is there a drug benefit that will help me out? Ship will help walk you through that, and so you're not alone. Uh, don't be intimidated by starting Medicare. Uh, and of course, always ARP. You know, we've got a yeah. wealth of resources on ARP.org as well. I, I would almost even start there at ARP.org, and then if you yeah. can't find what you're looking for, do the Google. Yeah, search. but to Brad, but to Brad's point, there, um, being able to reach these, these are really specially trained folks. Um, you know, Brad and I have a know a lot about all this kind of stuff, and so do our colleagues and volunteers all across the country. But these ship staffers, these professional staffers, really understand the minute details of some of this, and I think. Brad's earlier point about some of this can be overwhelming or intimidating. These are the kind of people that lower the blood pressure and make it a lot more simple to get through a process to figure out where you can get the help you need. And it's a free resource? And it's a totally free, free. Totally free okay. resource. And you talk to a live yep. human being. And you talk to yes, a live that's the other person. Thing, right. yeah. and, for many a and for many people, that's a huge difference maker. It is. I mean, I, yep. would, I would even wonder how long a conversation typically would take with SHIP or, or how much time Depends. You would... How much time you need. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I've had several conversations with SHIP. Um, I'll tell you, two years ago, this was before the insulin cap, um, they were informing me of these new uh, drug benefits that capped insulin. So there were like a handful of them yeah. uh, a couple years ago. And I work at ARP. I did not know about them. They said, well, you know, what you should do is, for people that need insulin, recommend these drug programs. I'm like, thank you, Ship. I had no <laughs> idea. Uh, that's a great recommendation. That's absolutely fantastic. So you can help out your members yes, by exactly. calling Ship yourself. That's yes. great. Okay, Earl is a winner joining us from Virginia tonight. Congratulations, hey, Earl. Go right ahead. Hey, Christina and guys. Hey. Uh, a little bit <laughs> about guys. myself. I'm a uh, I'm a 77 year old Vietnam era veteran, and and uh, obviously on a limited income, Medicare. Uh, been an AARP member and a solid RFD viewer for a long time. Woo! Uh, well, thank you. A good combo. <laughs> yeah, my big issue is um, is fuel costs, uh, and. In particular, right now, because this morning it was 22 degrees here in Radford. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was just wondering, are there fuel assistance programs that might be available for folks just like myself? Yeah. There are. Um, and this is a program that AARP fights for uh, every single year uh, at the federal level and in state houses all across the country. It's called the LIHEAP program. Instead of going into the long... Uh, uh, acronym here, what this does is provides a significant benefit um, for folks um, 
um, to help uh, pay for their heating uh, for their heating costs. And as this person said, I mean, it's October and they had a 22 degrees in Virginia, so you never know when you're need, gonna need to flip the heat on. And sometimes that's uh, happening a lot sooner in the year than, than it might. This program can provide folks up to about $1,400 a year as sort of a maximum benefit here. But the average benefit's around $500 per household, wow. which is significant when you're talking about a monthly uh, heating bill. Um, and again, this is a program um, that is incredibly valuable, incredibly important. And if you live in Florida or Texas or Southern California, and you're not too worried about the cold, but you are worried about the heat in the summertime, this program also helps oh, cool your houses as well, because it's not just about cold winters, it's about these increasingly hot summers that we're seeing as well too. So again, um, you can, uh, the benefits checkup, there are all sorts of places to learn about LIHEAP. You can just Google LIHEAP, L-I-H-E-A-P, <laughs> and that will pop right up. And again, um, local area agencies on aging and your community, communities all across the country will have all this information as well and can tell you how to get this benefit. Really important uh, and one that again, ARP continues to fight for uh, all over the country. All right, thank you so much and congratulations to you, Earl. We still have coolers to give away. We're gonna pause for a quick break though. Stay with us. If you have not had your opportunity to call in, this is it. 877-283-7570. Join our conversation tonight. If not for anything else, you might just get a cooler. And plus, we want to hear from you. We want to find out how inflation is impacting you. How is your particular wallet getting hit the hardest right now? Let us know. It's important, valuable information, literally. Stay with us for Real America Live with AARP right after this. What are some of the biggest Social Security myths? I've heard that when you pay Social Security taxes, Uncle Sam puts that money in an account under your name. When you retire, you get your money back with interest. That's wrong. Social Security is a pay-as-you-go system. If you paid Social Security taxes during your career, they helped cover benefits for your retired parents and their generation. People working now are paying for current retirees. Got it. Here's another question. A friend told me that the best retirement strategy is to take your reduced Social Security payments at age 62. Because if I wait to get a larger benefit, but then I die, I'll miss out on all that money. Is that good advice? It's true that some people die between 62 and the ages when you can claim your full or maximum retirement benefit, but most don't. The average American who reaches age 62 will live another 20 years or more. If you're in poor health or have a family history of early death, taking your benefits early might be a good idea. But for most people, it pays to wait. Good to know. I hope there's enough money left for me to collect. I hear a lot about Social Security going bankrupt. That's a myth. But Social Security does need to be updated. Right now, the system has a big surplus, but the reserve is expected to run out by the 2030s because the retiree population is growing faster than the workforce that's paying into Social Security. Even if that happens, it will continue to pay benefits because workers will still be contributing payroll taxes. But benefits would be lower unless Congress acts to make the system stable for the long run. To learn more, go to aarp.org slash social security. Welcome back. We still have a cooler to give away, so let's go straight to the phones. Before we do that, though, I want to make sure you have the number. We're going to put it on the screen for you. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. Okay, Mary is our next caller from Wisconsin. And Mary, congratulations well, on our winner. Well, thank you. Thank you much for returning my call. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. What, what did you want to share with us tonight? Well, I wanted to tell you that I'm a 94-year-old widow, and I'm on a limited um, income. I have Social Security, which is like 1100 a month. And then I do have uh, a few acres of land, which I want to keep as, uh, and, but I do use that for rent. And that's what I live on, is my Social Security of 1100 
And so I get maybe about 1900 My income is about like 1900 19 I Well, it's about, I, I'm, well, what would that be? 1100 for Social Security and about 800 for rent? Yeah, about 1900 19, Yeah, right, something like that. Maybe a little more. I'm just not remembering it. But I've been a, I've been, I married and went right out on the farm in Wisconsin. And my husband and I farmed way over like 2,000 acres at one time. But then as we got older, we had to sell off and, um, or, or uh, not rent. And we had like cattle or we had like soybeans and corn and so forth. And I call myself a farm her yet. <laughs> I love it. I do, yes. And and uh, you can take the farm away from me, but you'll or from yeah, but I'll always be a farmer. A farmer. I watch AARP every day and check all the cuz my son is on my was on a farm now. So he um I like to see what his, you know, what the what his corn would earn soybeans would reap, you know, in a, in a mm-hmm. <laughs> you're watching yeah. the markets, <laughs> Mary, you're watching yes, the markets. I, I love that. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm 94, but I'm very healthy. I'm, but that's what good old farm air does to you and working hard. <laughs> we worked really hard. My husband and I really hard dairy farm. You, did you have dairy cattle? Dairy. We had dairy till we went to fifty, and at fifty, we said we just couldn't handle any more of that. No, it's. I mean, hauling milk, yeah. you know, every day, twice yeah. a day, and so forth. Okay, three times a day sometimes. Mary, we want to thank you so much for calling in, and congratulations, you are a winner. So you are going to get that cooler, and boy, you sound sharp as ever <laughs> being in your nineties. What did you guys wanted to add to what she said? Well, uh, first of all, as an Iowan, shout out to Wisconsin, Woo. fellow Midwesterner. Um, but this cola is so important to someone like Mary. It is so important. And the other thing that we, I don't know if we touched on this, but the cola happened, um, but the Medicare premiums also went down. And so the amount that, because uh, typically what happens is you pay your Medicare directly from your Social Security, and often what happens is the cola goes up, but your premiums go up, and therefore the benefit is not as much as you think it would be. It's like offset. It's offset, yeah. exactly. However, this year, uh, for people like Mary, the COLA, or next year I should say, the COLA is going up, but the Medicare premiums are going down. And it's a very big deal because that is money in people's pockets. Wow. And so, um, again, anytime there's good news uh, financially to share, we love to share it, and that is some good news. Yeah. That is wonderful news, and boy, she was a sweetheart. Thanks for oh, calling yeah. us yeah. tonight, Mary. That was wonderful. We're going to go to Pennsylvania now, where Jim is joining the conversation. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. Jim, what's on your mind tonight? What do you want to share with us? Well, there's at least uh, one federal program, I believe it was, and I forgot the name of it, uh, but it was to uh, recover uh money that you lost uh, because of the COVID, and uh, you have to have a computer in order to uh, apply for the program, and uh, if you don't have a computer, you're just out of luck, which is me. Well, one of the, there's, you know, there are a range of stuff now, some of those programs related to COVID and the pandemic being phased out. Um, this is what Jim says about not having a, a computer at your house is something that we do hear from our members really all over the place. One of the things you can do is that many local libraries, many local senior centers, many local community centers have uh, personal computers, PCs available for people to use for free. Um, and they also usually have staff on hand that can help you use them if you're unfamiliar with them or you know need help navigating a particular website. So. My suggestion here would be to look for one of those community resources, um, and they may only be several blocks away from where you live. Again, they tend to be in places like libraries, uh, community centers, senior centers, um, and again, you should be able to find some help about uh, how to use those and, and again, to navigate the sites um, to figure out um, what, where you need to go and where the help is. Okay. You know, w- one other resource for Jim, too, uh, when it comes to phone numbers and maybe some assistance with computers is, and you had mentioned this earlier, the area agencies on aging. That's right. 
Um, great so resource. It's a great resource. And so co contact your local area agency on aging and they will help uh, you call them and they, they will potentially look things up for you or give you phone numbers as opposed to websites. Okay. Wonderful. Ralph from Texas is joining the conversation now. Thanks for joining us from the Lone Star State. Ralph, go right ahead. Thank you. I have, uh, I'm 83, retired military, retired sheriff's department, and I have a 42-year-old special needs daughter. She's Down syndrome. Uh, she has to have uh, leg braces ankle, foot, lower leg, because of uh, uh, the muscles and all in her legs are very weak. They're called Arizona braces. Now, these braces she has to wear every day, wherever she goes, whatever she does, she has to have these braces, or supposed to have, because they help support her. The Medicare, she is own Medicare, and Medicare says these are durable goods, and they must last five years. And I'm amazed because you can't find anything that you put on your feet and wear seven days a week, 365 days a year, that's going to last five years, but... They insist that's their policy, so she goes anywhere from 18 months to two years after she's worn out these braces that she doesn't have braces to wear, and Medicare won't come off of their policy. So I need help to find some way to get her braces when she wears out the one she's got. That's a tough this is a this is a definitely a very tough situation as Brad just said and and, and we see this in other areas um, with what they call as you said sort of the medical durable goods um, these are things like the leg braces you discuss or they could be wheelchairs it could be walkers there could be a range of items my suggestion would be I think two things uh, first to ask uh, to have a conversation with um, with your daughter's physician Sometimes doctors, offices work together and are able to sort of find ways to say, oh, you know, there's a way to get these particular braces at a lower cost or perhaps ways to make them last a little bit longer um, so that your money goes a little bit further. And again, this is an area where I would also reach out to, um, uh, to the local um, area agency on aging because this probably isn't the, this is probably a more common problem than we might think it is. Um, and these calls come into these area agencies on aging all the time. The first call they may not know the answer to, but then we get two or three more like it, and they're starting to figure out where there might be solutions here. But this is a difficult area. Um, and like all health insurance, it's not perfect, although uh, Medicare does a far better job on some of this stuff than private health insurance does. So, But this is a difficult situation, and, um, and again, I would start actually with uh, with your daughter's physician to see if he or she has any ideas. Ralph, I don't know if anyone has told you this recently, but you, sir, are a national hero. Thank you for your service on the police force. Thank you for your service to this country. And what you're doing for your daughter, fighting That's for right. her, is so beautiful. That's right. And you're going to be in our prayers, sir. So thank you for calling. One more quick thing here. We also need to provide respite and help for people like Ralph who provide the mm -hmm. kind of caregiving uh, yes. uh, you know, needs that, that people and their family and friends have. And this is, you know, we're, this is a huge, gigantic issue happening all across the country. We need to thank folks for all of their service, but we also need to thank caregivers. Every caregiver who's listening Every to us right day. now, your and sacrifice probably goes unrecognized. millions and millions okay. of you out there. God bless you and thank you for what you're doing, not just for humanity, but for I would say for, um, I like to think of it like this. I store up my riches in heaven, and that's what people like that are doing. Because yep. you're sacrificing for yourself or for somebody else. God, I don't really get worked up, but boy, Ralph, you got me worked up tonight. We're going to go to Oklahoma now. Tony joins the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us, Tony. Go right ahead. Yeah, say, um, do you need to be uh, on Medicare and Medicaid to get some of these benefits? And uh, I'm a retired, I'm not a retired vet, but I am a veteran. 
No. 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 So for the Medicare Savings Program uh, and the Extra Help Program, those two programs that I had talked about early, earlier, um, you just need to be on Medicare. And so, you know, there, there are, are, of course, a lot of programs out there. Um, if you are on both, you know, who knows if that's going to impact what the benefit is. But again, that's an opportunity who, to uh, contact SHIP and they can walk you through if you're both on Medicare and Medicaid right. um, and you're dual eligible and maybe SHIP would be able to kind of walk you through that process. And then to get to SHIP, do you have a link on AARP.org? Well, every state, we do we have a link on AARP? I, That's a good I, question. I, I'm not sure that we do. Um, that is a really good question. I'm not sure. You guys can find out, let us know. But yeah. SHIP <laughs> programs, as Brad has said, are in every state. They, they were a part of the Affordable Care Act. They've been funded through the federal government. Um, and has it become very popular. So each state has their own program, and um, it's the kind of thing you could just simply Google, um, or probably uh, if you got if you've got a phone book, you might even find you might even find a listed in there. Yeah. Isn't it funny how the, the phone book is now from here yeah. to shrinking. here? Shrinking. Yeah, exactly. yeah, shrinking. A phone pamphlet. Yeah. <laughs> phone pamphlets are good. Yeah. Okay, we only have a few moments left. I want to give you both an opportunity to share your final thoughts. Well, one thing I do want to share is for uh, we've got a great online event happening, um, and it's called How to Get More Out of Your Medicare and Social Security Benefits. This is on October 27th. It is virtual, free, and it goes from 1 to 4 Eastern. Um, and you can register at learn.aarp.org, and we'll walk you through some of these Again? programs that we talked about today. Learn.aarp. Dot org. That's October 27th, 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. You might want to grab your phone and take a picture of the screen real quick so that you can make sure and get involved in this AARP online event. All right, Greg. Well, I want to share a couple of additional AARP resources with our viewers tonight, too. Uh, AARP.org slash Social Security is a very good website that we operate where you can get all the good information on Social Security. Simple to navigate, simple to learn, uh, and a very important one to go. Obviously, you can see we have aarp.org slash Medicare, which helps people understand, let's say you're about to, re you're thinking about you're re gonna retire in a year or so, it'll tell you when you have to file for Medicare um, and uh, all that. And then the one uh, I like the best is aarp.org Medicare Made Easy, because Medicare, complicated, but we can make it easy for you by going to this website. It's easy to remember. E easier. Easy, easier to remember. Yeah. Fair enough. Medicare Made Easy. Okay, uh, another great show. Uh, you guys always bring such, I feel like our shows are building as well. Like yeah. every time you come, they get better, more informative, and oh, you're helping more trip. people. Yeah, yeah the, the calls just keep getting yeah. better and better. So I want to remind everybody, AARP joins us every third Thursday of the month. You could just take a calendar and just mark every third Thursday and be sure to join us right here. Next month, we're going to be back on November 17th when we reveal the latest holiday scams. You want to make sure you're aware. It's the annual holiday scam show. That's right. And you know those scammers, they're getting much smarter. But yep. AARP is well ahead of the game. We're going to talk about that when we meet back here on the third Thursday of November around Thanksgiving time, yeah. guys. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for calling. We look forward to hearing from you next time. If you didn't get through tonight, have a beautifully blessed evening.